In this video, we will walk through putting together our electrical system. But before we get into it, I just want to reiterate that this is not a how-to video. We are not professional electricians, but we did follow the steps put forward by Explorer's Life, as well as hundreds of hours of research. We have a working DIY electrical system, and we're really proud of that. But if you have true electrical questions, we suggest that you go directly to the manufacturers, Explorer's Life, and or any other professional with electrical experience. Now let's get into it. With the electrical housing complete, we laid out all the components that will be mounted and triple checked that the wire runs made sense and would work. Then we marked all the locations of the mounting screws so that we could pre-drill. Next step was pre-drilling all of the holes. There would need to be larger holes cut into the housing in order for wires to get from the wall into the front of the electrical. So we marked those as well. With everything drilled, we moved on to attaching the mounting supplies. We have T-nuts in our framing and rivnuts nuts in the van wall, and we utilized both of those for our attachment. We bolted in multiple steel L-brackets into the housing, and then when everything is in place, we will bolt those L-brackets into the framing and the van. It was time to bring in our two Battleborn GC3 270 amp hour game changer batteries. So I'm now going to install the feet onto our Battleborn battery. And we're gonna show you what we're doing along the way. Um, we bought two kits of the feet from Battleborn themselves. And it makes it pretty easy because they're gonna attach on just like that. Um, and the inside of these are threaded for an M5 bolt. And they supplied the M5 bolt with these. So, it's good. It's good. It's perfect. It's good. That's what I do with the feet. So now that the batteries are firmly mounted into the battery cabinet, we are going to start cutting some wires. And the first we need to do is take off the plastic terminal caps on both sides of the batteries. Now it was time to cut, strip, crimp, and heat streak the four out wire that we connect our two batteries. So I cut the wire so it was a nice 90 degree angle. Then I stripped some of it back. So if I pick that up, you can see it. Um, and I measured how far I needed to strip it back, put that on, and now we're about to use our big old boy to crimp this on. From there, it was relatively simple to follow the steps in Explorers Life's electrical video. We attached a component, measured a wire run, cut, strip, crimp, and heat streak, and then connect. We took a lot of time to complete this because all of these components were really expensive and we didn't want to ruin anything. And while it may have been a straightforward process, it was by no means easy. We struggled with a lot of things while putting this together. And if you want to see a day-by-day -day breakdown of the highs and lows, pop over to our YouTube Shorts and watch the first 18 days of our 31-day van build challenge. So first stop of the day is we're going to mount our multi-plus. Um, we're really concerned on how the wire runs are going to happen from the bottom of the Game Changer battery up and over. So we're going to do that. After connecting the batteries to the ANL fuse, and then to the master switch, and then to the Lynx distributor, Joey decided that we should check to see if the system actually works before moving forward with any more components. Um, hold on, I'm 
Let's upside down. And that's all we need for power? That's what it says. Okay. You ready? Is that a yes? Did it work? Hey! Why are you crying? What? Because this was so hard. No! <laughs> with confirmation that we at least connected the batteries into the system properly, it was time to move forward with connecting everything else. First up was the inverter. Yeah. Now that the Victron is officially connected, we are going to turn it on for the very first time, make sure everything works, sounds good, all that, and then connect it to our Victron app. Oh, now we're doing it. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna give it a second. Uh, it's up in the cabinet. Oh, in the wall? Yeah. Well, because I don't I want see it, Blue. I right. see it on. Because okay. it's just hanging. What's that? Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to. So click on. Do what we're supposed to hear. The light turned on. Light turned on. Top light green says inverter on. So now open that. Yeah. Stonks. We got an inverter. Look at that, found it already. Smart bus, connecting. Next, we connected the shore power wires that we installed in a previous video. Then it was a lot of cutting, stripping, crimping, and heat shrinking wires. We hooked up our AC distribution panel and then pulled all of the AC wires through then moved on to our DC distribution panel. Once the DC distribution panel was wired, we screwed in the unit. We attached our solar isolator, our DC to DC charger, and finished up pulling all of the wires in the wall through to the front of the electrical cabinet. With everything on the front, we were able to then push the electrical unit into its final position and mount it into the van. At this point, the electrical unit weighs a couple hundred pounds, so it took quite a bit of effort to get it into the right position and then find a way to line it up with the riv nuts and the T nuts that are in the framing in the van. But once we got it in place, it was fairly simple to bolt everything in. Just to be certain that the electrical housing cabinet would not move, we also screwed it into the floor. We then connected the DC to DC charger to our van's battery system using the customer connection point, climbed onto the roof, and installed our solar wiring and solar panels, and tested the whole system. I am a genius. And that's how we put together our electrical system. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. And if you want to follow our journey as we convert our camper van, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you next week.